One, two, three, four, five. Once far from God and dead in sin, no light my heart can see. But in God's word the light I found, now Christ liveth in me. I've watched this now for years, and the media is going to do what they want to do. Uh, none of them has spent any time with us. They have no idea who we are or what we are. It's so offensive when people say we're parrots, or that we're like a cult with this charismatic leader who does our thinking. My dad never let anybody do anybody's thinking except ourselves. He insisted that we think things through. It's unfortunate, but that's the way the media operates. Their, their job is to... Uh, sell newspapers and get get a television audience and they also have an agenda a lot of them do there's no human that I've loved and grown up with that is appropriately lumped with anything hateful or um, blindly prejudiced but so it goes that's the society we live in I don't think there's any mystery that certainly some of the major national networks are left-leaning it's, it's quite a, it cracks me up sometimes just to listen to their wording. We're not part of the religious right. They're as offensive to us as the, matter of fact, many, many times they're more violent toward us than the uh, homosexuals. When Christ was on this earth and he says repeatedly, they hate me, they'll hate you, they'll speak all manner of evil against you, it's just a way to when you have a message that is so clear and carries its credibility in its teeth, so to speak, you've got to then uh, vilify or demonize the messenger if you don't like the message. Religion, true religion, isn't about politics. It's the, it's the antithesis of politics. Whatever rhetoric, white noise they need to have out there, so be it as long as they publish the message. That's the ultimate. We can't control how they spin this stuff. And the fact that they have to keep spinning it tells me that they feel the force of our basic position, or they wouldn't spend so much time and energy on it. And underneath all that white noise, they know. It's an axiomatic matter of fact that you can't go through this life, which is at its fundamental level, a moral universe can't go through this life, travel in a moral universe, essentially a moral universe, and not expect to have controversy over that issue of morality, right and wrong. And you guys can't duck it like Pontius Pilate calling for a basin of water so he could publicly wash his hands and say, I have nothing to do with the blood of this righteous man, but you take him out and crucify him. It's an impossibility to straddle that fence. Break these signs out in some public place. Display them. And it will only be a matter of minutes, if not seconds, before the same kind of vicious fag attack, we call it. Fag attack. Fag attack. Hey, monger! Hey, monger! Hey, mongers! Hey, mongers! Get back to where you came from! Get back into the goddamn wherever the fuck you came from! You hate, you hate people, hate monger! And if you
to get enough of them gather, gather around there, there'll pretty soon be some kind of physical violence. You know that, but God loves everybody. Vandalized this church 17 times. Shot out the glass in the sign 13, I think it is, times. When they set the bomb off, though, that was the last straw, so I put out a $5,000 reward and caught them. They set it off over there by Cheryl's house, not far from where one of her little babies, just a few weeks old, was sleeping. And the guy got 14 days in jail for it. Could I have to tell you what would happen if we set off a bomb at one of these fag churches? We'd, I'd still be in the penitentiary. There was a very public trial where the former prosecutor had filed charges against a lady who had t taken her truck and tried to run 20 of us down in front of Washburn University. Uh, the jury acquitted her. The facts were undisputed. There wasn't any question that she drove a car up there. But because the jury didn't like the message that we were preaching, they acquitted her. And it's not a logical extension from that to, to, for us to believe, reasonably believe, that if she had killed one of us, they would have acquitted her. A human government is, is, is constituted by the Almighty, but it plainly says it was constituted in order to punish wicked people and in order to uh, deliver good people. And it is a perversion of the government of God when you see uh, these uh, institutions of human government punishing righteousness and vindicating evil. This Elizabeth Birch, who is the head of this biggest of all fag groups called the Human Rights Campaign, and her partner, Hillary Rosen, they're the leaders. They're the power couple in Washington. And Elizabeth Birch is the one they quote in this story about me saying that Fred Phelps is a walking hate crime. See, they think if you say God hates fags, if you say that thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, that that ought to be a crime, a hate crime. And their rationale is that you are thereby encouraging the lunatic fringe to beat up and kill gay people. That argument's defective because it proves too much. See what it says, that you can't preach the Bible because it might make some people mad and they'll do crazy things. But it's got traction. That argument's got traction. All this business of reporting hate crimes about fags that they use as empirical evidence to urge the passage of laws is deceptive and misleading because they report hate crimes when I'm out there with those signs. They report that as a hate crime. What they mean when they say it is, stop Phelps from preaching that God hates fags. But they know they can't say it in so many words because they run square into the First Amendment. You can take your First Amendment and put it where the sun don't shine because you're interpreting it away anyhow. You filthy fag judges from one end of this country to the other and legislators and city councils and county commissions pass laws, rules, regulations just as fast as their perverted minds and wills and hands can work. Do your worst! I dare you! Try to stop us!